This is the Blackmagic 3-axis gimbal that I've designed. Um, the first thing you need to do, of course, is to print out the 3D printed parts, which you'll find on Thingiverse. Um, and I'll go through all the various stages of assembly and setup. We look first at what's needed for the tilt axis. Um, the one I'm going to demonstrate here is for the uh, Black Mag the Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera. Um, you might be using a different camera, in which case I've put different widths of this camera tray on Thingiverse so that you can choose one that fits your camera. But from now on I'll be talking about assembling the gimbal for the Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera. Um, when you're building the gimbal you really need to wire it up as you're building. Um, if you try and do it later it presents all sorts of difficulties. So when we're doing the tilt axis we need basically three sets of wires. We need the camera, control lead. This controls the, the focus, the zoom, the aperture and also provides the power for the camera and I've wired that up according to the Blackmagic manual. Um, there is a similar lead provided with the Blackmagic but it's much too clunky and heavy for this and in any case we don't need all the connections. In fact we only need five connections um, and I'll try and put the instructions for this uh, on the on the Thingiverse website. You need a 12 volt, a ground, you need an S bus connector, you need 5 volts out, that's optional, you can take 5 volts from the camera to control the um, camera control box or you can take 5 volts from the flight controller so that wire is optional and the last wire, the fifth wire is the wire to um, start and stop recording now if you're not going to use SBUS you're going to need a separate wire for each channel so there'll be more wires I'm trying to keep this with as few wires as possible because we need to pass the, all the wires through the center of the motors. There's three motors and they've got hollow shafts so we pass for the sake of ease and so that the motor, the gimbal can turn through a full 360 degrees we're using hollow shaft motors. I'll put the specification of the motors on Thingiverse um, basically any hollow shaft gimbal motor is rated for a mid-sized camera from 400 grams to a kilogram I would do. I've used these specific uh, T-Motor GB36-1 so if you haven't ordered the motors yet I would recommend you order these motors. They will handle any load up to a kilogram. So the first thing you need to do is attach the IMU, the sensor, to the to the tilt tray, the camera mounting tray. This needs to be connected very firmly. I've connected this Lexmos sensor with two bolts to the bottom. There's an inlay for that. If you don't have a case for the IMU and there's another place you can mount it and that's in this little indent here and but if you're going to put it in there you need to glue it very firmly using double sided sticky is not enough it leaves too much movement on the IMU and if there is the slightest movement on the IMU then you're going to have problems so uh, that's what's needed for the for the tilt axis and now we'll we'll put it together
So let's get assembling it. The first thing you need to do is put these two cheeks, the left and right cheeks, and mount them onto the camera plate. Now these are adjustable, they're bolted in. Uh, the one with four holes on the side of the IMU is bolted onto there with two three millimeter uh, bolts and that then becomes there and there and that then becomes adjustable for height. So we loosely put the four bolts in there and I'll do that now. But there's three things you've got to remember about uh, uh, this gimbal if you want success and that is it must be free to move but also uh, completely rigid and the last thing is that it must be perfectly balanced so all three axes are uh, you can adjust the balance for and in fact the tilt axis there's two places you can adjust the balance um, I've attached the cheeks here and you can see uh, loosely and you can see you can move the cheeks up and down and that is so that you can balance the the camera perfectly in the y axis and when we start off we'll just do it roughly and we'll fine tune it later when the whole gimbal is assembled so you need to measure your camera um, the black magic is uh, 65 and a half centimeters high so we'll assume that the center of gravity is halfway up it might not be that's when the fine tuning comes in so halfway up 65 and a half is 37 uh, 37.75 so we'll measure 37.75 my maths might be wrong but you can correct me later if you like Just short of 38. Hang on. I've got the maths all wrong. The camera is 65.5. So half of that is 32.75. So the base of the camera base of the tray distance between that and the center of the shaft is just short of 33 and when we've measured that accurately then we can tighten up the bolt and we're good to go So now I've tightened up the bolts, I can mount the motor and the bearing. Uh, the motor bolts in on the same side as where the IMU is and you'll see that the, the um, holes for the screws in the motor are different on each side. On this side they're 2.5mm screws and you need four 2.5mm by uh, five millimeter screws to go in there they're not supplied with the engine for some reason with the motor for some reason and in this side you need four and um, three mil by five mil uh, bolts so I'll just uh, I'll put that together now I'll put a complete parts list on Thingiverse of course so you know how many bolts and things to buy now we're going to bolt the motor on and it's important at this stage to work out where the wires go. The wires from the IMU go up this groove here and then through the 
centre of the motor. So before we bolt the motor in, we will thread the IMU wires through the hollow shaft of the motor. There we go. Now the camera control is mounted on top, so that doesn't need to go up that groove. That goes through the center hole of the cheek and through the hollow shaft of the motor again. So we thread that through. Okay, now we've got all the wires from the camera tray going through the center of the motor and all we need to do now is to bolt it in there. I've done this wrong because the side next to the cheek has got to be the rotating side. So we'll re-thread that through correctly. Don't get caught out. Thread the IMU wires. Thread the camera control wires. Pull them through. And that motor is now ready to bolt in onto the cheek, which I'll do now. So now I've, I've bolted the motor onto the tray. That's the camera control lead that goes onto the camera and the IMU lead. Now before we go onto the roll axis, which we're ready to do now, I just need to say something about mounting the camera on the tray. The camera, sorry about that. The camera, if you're using the black magic, has three mounting tripod mounting um, sockets there. And so you can mount it very firmly to the tray. Um, I use two of those. One that I can easily adjust and another one to lock it. So that goes on there. The only thing we need to know about that is the back is slightly longer than the front because the camera goes back a bit. At the end of these slots it's drilled out so you can easily slip the bolt in and slide it in. Once it's in, it stays there. Okay, um, so that's for mounting the camera. It's very critical that you get the camera in the right place when you're balancing the tripod. So it's good to have a second or a third bolt to lock it into place. Now we're going to work on the roll axis for which we're going to need, I'll let you know in a minute.